Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Thoughts Exactly. We left beautiful Palm Air to spend the month of August and September in upstate New York. We love it here. And the first thing we did when we got here is we put our hummingbird feeder back out. Well, I learned something new. Hummingbirds are very territorial. Once they find a food source, they don't let any other hummingbird get near it. So this one hummingbird, every time another little hummingbird got near this feeder with the sugar water that Kirk makes, this other hummingbird would swoop down from nowhere and scare it away. So we went out and we bought another hummingbird feeder thinking, okay, the other hummingbird feeder can be used by another hummingbird. Uh-uh. The same hummingbird has now monopolized both feeders. Go figure. Anyway, today on the show, we have a wonderful interview with Ryan McCurdy, the Artistic Director of Savannah Repertory Theater in Savannah, Georgia. So let's get to our Zoom call with Ryan. Join us. Hello, Ryan. Thank you so much for being on the show. And congratulations on your new position at Savannah Repertory Theater as their Executive Artistic Director. Thank you, Charles. It's a pleasure to be here. Ryan, give us a bit of background and history on Savannah Rep. I will. In 2017, a task force that was led by Nick, who's a tremendous Broadway performer and director, and Ken Haley, a director, and Bishop, who is a technical director, they had wanted to create a theater in the South. So they went on a pilgrimage, looked at a bunch of cities, and the stipulations were that the city needed to have incredible cultural and literary credentials, and it needed to already not have an equity. Theater. And they got to Savannah, and it was this sort of pinch me moment in 2017 where they said this this city doesn't have this type of a theater, but it does have this you know rich literary history and 300 years worth of of stories to tell. So they formed, and I actually was not part of the original team, but by happenstance was in Savannah on other business on 2017. So I was at the first night. I like to think that from that moment forward, I was committed to the company. And I did tell them at opening night, I said, how do you need me in the future? Let me know. And now, uh, three years later, I'm coming on as their executive artistic director. Well, yes, you have been on stage at Savannah Rep. You were in Pump Boys and Dinettes, and you were the music director for Little Women, and you're a board member. So how did the opportunity to now become the artistic director present itself? I think you, you kind of charted my journey, which I just kept recommitting, and, and whenever they said, here's something else we need, I said, I would love, I would love to serve. Uh, so I joined the board when they asked me. Well, explain to our viewers what the duties and responsibilities of an artistic director are. Some people may not know. Right. Well, it, different theater levels, it's, it's uh, a different type of a job, but uh, specifically we're a small professional theater is, is our union jurisdiction, which means that we're able to use union members and non-union members, which is a really great... Um, uh, professional crossover. It gives early career artists a chance to work with legends and, and, you know, really great career artists. And it gives career artists a chance to, you know, flex their muscles a little bit and, and teach and lead. Um, and in that type of a theater, an artistic director is really shepherding the material that is going to be done. And traditionally, there are artistic director and a managing director. And our managing director is a tremendous uh, woman named Ann Bishop, who is one of the day one uh, members of the company. Now, I have to say, this is an interesting time to take on such a position. Broadway is shut down. Regional theaters have canceled seasons. It's like being appointed to run the Securities and Exchange Commission during a stock market crash. <laughs> what are the challenges and obstacles you are facing as you begin guiding Savannah Rep into this new era of hygienically safe theater? And that's the phrase for it. Uh, I, I like to... Th I like optimistically for possible and I've been trying to see the positive see these as uh, as opportunities instead of challenges as much as possible part of the thing is when a theater company really gets into its groove it go 10 15 20 years working hard on producing the shows it's been a great opportunity not only to expand the board but to expand the staff I mean we have a lot of new positions being filled that are helping create new programming for us on uh, centering underrepresented voices in, into the American theater, as well as bringing us in who in 10 or 20 years, they're going to be our single great source of, of donors and patronage. Uh, so those are what I'm hoping are things that we're taking advantage of during this opportunity. Recently, and with the permission of equity, the Actors Union and the prevailing state government 
two theaters in the Berkshires have mounted productions under tents and parking lots, incorporating all the mandated uh, protocols and safety measures. Do you see Savannah Rep following suit? And if so, what shows would you consider mounting in a parking lot? We have outdoor space which is at a premium in savannah so sort of our trade-off of being a little out of downtown means that we have some bridge or in you so we've talked about what that could be if we set up a stage and brought in socially distanced uh audience uh seating uh i will say we've applied for the rights i can't say the play because we don't have the rights yet we've applied to the rights for a very famous two-hander which uh we're intending to do over zoom and offering that to our uh sustaining donors that have helped us through this, uh, this, this, this very dangerous and difficult time. And that would be acted by Nick Corley and Sandra Karras, who are two of the centerpieces of the company and very well beloved by the patron. We've talked about bringing in a concert series. We've talked about bringing in a couple of very small cast plays where the space can be large to keep them six feet away. I know that's what the Godspell and the Berkshires are doing. New play development, uh, new works, uh, possibly 10 minute play festivals. A lot of that material that's being coordinated right now can move online. Uh, now, to keep Savannah Rep operating during this non-performance period, you, the staff, and the board of directors have started a fundraising campaign called Savannah Rep COVID-19 Ghost Light Relief Fund. Tell us about it and how someone watching this show can help. The, we had gotten this wonderful uh, in-kind donation last year of these beautiful paving stones. And uh, we were going to create a permanent walkway from our parking lot to the new hand accessible entrance. What if, what if we showed our patrons that we are determined to come back by putting their names into the walkway, a permanent walkway? So yes, we started this ghost light relief fund. I understand it's a hard time for everyone. I understand that you know, we were able to get rent forgiven for a few months and it has expired and we are still months from being able to produce in the space. And uh, I know everybody needs their money. I know that our landlord needs his money. As a result, uh, we are needing to raise that overhead when we can't have ticket sales. But all amounts over $100, you have the opportunity to get different sizes of paving stones and, uh, and, and literally personalize them in a way with your name or your family, or you can dedicate them to someone else. And they've been very successful so far. And I, I, I've been really pleased with the response, but we also need so much more. That's kind of where we are right now with the campaign. Well, I'll put up the website for Savannah Rep on the screen so people can uh, go online and go to the, um, the area where they can uh, donate and make a contribution. Of our commitment to our patrons with these paving stones is if we move, the stones come with us. They'll go to our new exterior. Fantastic. That's great. Ryan, thank you so much for being on the show. You are amazing. And I know under your guidance, Savannah Rep will go on and on and on for many, many years. Now, as a parting note, what words of wisdom would you like to share with a young uh, person just beginning he or she's career in the theater during this time that look out and see only dark clouds on the horizon? To continue your metaphor for a moment, when you said it was like the SEC during a stock market crash, uh, when I started trading stocks, you know, those, those words hang in your head, the uh, a buy low, sell high. And I, I would encourage anybody that's looking at this as a moment, to uh, to buy in, to buy low, to invest in yourself. I would I would tell people that are starting at the very beginning of their careers and feeling like they've already lost all of their opportunities, hang on, you've got this. It is going to come back. It is going to be wonderful. And this is the time to really invest in yourself and an artist in a way that you might not have the time to do when you're busy going to auditions and being in rehearsals and performances. I have never seen before this uh, pandemic. I've never seen so many spectacular artists offering classes and YouTube tutorials and workshops online. It almost never happens. So make yourself the best that you can be right now. And then when the when the world reopens and theater reopens, you're going to be so poised for an exceptional career. So hang on, study hard, buy low. That's what I would have to, to uh, just come to the theater world. Thank you for joining me on the show today and we'll see you soon and the best of luck with savannah rap thank you charles for being here it's great to see you love you too bye 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 now bye performing arts are so important to the cultural heritage of this country so during this time when there are no live performances it's important that we support the performing arts organizations whether it be savannah rep or any local organization that you attend regularly they have to keep their doors open 
So when performances resume, we have a place to go see wonderful, wonderful performances. Here's a few fun facts on people we know and love who are regulars on My Thoughts Exactly. It's Fun Facts time. Rhoda Rage is originally of French descent. Her last name was pronounced Rajay. Herman Plushke served five years in federal prison for tampering with evidence. Charlemagne Godfrey is a member of the LGBTQIA plus community, although he does not know it. Well, that's our show for the week. Before we go, I want to say thank you to Christopher for subscribing to the show, and I want to say congratulations to Adrian for getting her beautiful artwork published in the second annual Artfolio book. See you next week, everybody, on My Thoughts Exactly. Bye!